All right, well, the 650i came in the garage today because we got a problem with a tire pressure monitor, and it's giving me an error on the TPM, tire pressure monitor system, and I think it may be that one of my batteries is gone bad because this is a 2008 model. So let's get set up in here with INPA on the computer, and we're going to find out what's going on with our tire pressure monitoring system here. All right, so we are sitting in the car, and I just have the key on. I don't have it started, so you can see that right there I have a tire pressure monitor warning up. The check engine light's on because it's not started, but the key's on, and all the other things. But the tire pressure monitor one is the one that I'm concerned about, because you can see over here in the center screen, it says tire pressure monitor malfunction. All right, so we got INPA hooked up down here. This is the software that lets you connect up to the car, and we are connected up, so we just got to pick our car. And so we're going to pick F4, and then we're going to go to the chassis module right there, and then you'll see right here is the tire pressure monitor system. And so now we're going to read our memory, so let's see what's going on. We hit F4 for error memory. And then we're going to hit F1 to read our error memory. Right there. So as we can see, it says we have two errors in the memory. One is a failure of the RDC system, is that uh, 604E. The other is an error on the sensor itself, so a 6055, if I look it up on my phone to see what the errors are, we can see right here on the phone, if I can get it to focus, that the 604E is the system, the 6055 is the front right wheel electronics. So it's either the sensor or it might be the transmitter. Alright, so we've narrowed it down to which wheel, so now what we want to do is figure out is it a problem with the system or is it a problem with just the sensor because the sensors have gotten old this is a 2008 so the battery might be dead might be the only problem so we're going to have a look see and see if we can figure out if it's that right front sensor all right so with codes reset and i started the car because the battery was getting a little bit low but we can see down here on the telematics that we do have a problem with the battery on one of these it's showing a 120 not really sure why what's the difference in 0 and 120 but it shows for the ID1 which is the right front the battery is showing a different number so most likely it's going to be my battery here so I'm going to have to take the wheel off I tried just putting a new sensor up in the uh, rim and seeing if it would do it but the other one is still registering so I'm going to have to get it totally out of the wheel put the other one on then we'll come back and we will see if this resets our issue all right so we got our tire back from the tire shop i had to get them to dismount it because these are run flats and you can't just push down on the tire and get your hand in there so you have to take the tire off the rim for run flats but we're going to be swapping these run flats out for some regular non-run flat tires here pretty soon anyway but now we can get it mounted back up on the car and then we'll go back to impa and we're going to check and see if it'll pick up the registration for that new sensor. And we'll also check our antennas and all of that just to make sure everything's okay. All right. So with a new tire pressure sensor on, you can see we don't have any codes on the dash right now. But if I go to IMPA and I look at the status, you can see that these two are reading. That one's reading. Well, there's my new sensor. It's not active and it's not showing any pressure right now because it's not tied to the car. The other ones are showing pressure. But if I go over to F5 over here to look at the batteries, I'm still showing nothing over here on the zeros. But it's not tied to the car, so we don't know if that's going to show something. So now we got to tie it to the car and get that sensor to activate. All right, so to activate our new sensor, we got to go back and select our car. So we got to select the E60. And then we got to select the chassis. And then we got to select the tire pressure monitor system. And then it's going to tell us that our languages don't match. 
And so then we got to go over here to activate. And so we got to hit F6 and go into the activation screen. So now we can activate the static test, which is F1. And what we're going to do is see if it'll automatically pick up that sensor. So we go to the static test. Now in order to make it test, you actually have to turn on the sensors. And so what we got to do is hit F1 to turn on the band mode. And so we're going to hit F1 right there, boop, and it turns it on. Now when that comes on, it starts flashing the light up here to tell you that it's in training mode. And so we got it set up here. So now what we want to do is do the F2 function, which is the wheel identification while standing. And so now we're going to hit F2. And what it's going to do is run a test. It's going to try to find the wheel sensors inside and make sure that it can pick them up. So hopefully that's going to run and tell us that it picked up the new sensor. So it says right there, wheel learn successful. So it learned its new sensors. It didn't have an error. So now right here, we'll go back and it says test OK. So we did all right. We could also check our antenna, but let's go over and check and see if it picked up the new sensor. So now we're going to go to read status, which is F5. And we're going to pick up the status and see if it's now picking up that sensor. So we go to wheel status and then we go to F4. And now, as you can see, we are reading all of the sensors. So that sensor came in right there as a new ID. And so it's showing nominal pressure and it's showing actual pressure. So it looks like it picked it up. If we look over here, we can see we're at all zero. So that's looking pretty good. They're all consistent. So what we want to do is go back and we got to turn our band mode off. So let's go back over here and see. So let's hit F3 to reset. Turns the band mode off. So now it's gone back into regular mode. You can see that I don't have the uh, symbol up on the dash anymore. So now let's go back and we're going to look one more time and we're going to see if it's picking up those sensors. So let's go back to read status F5. And then we're going to go to F4 to check our telemetrics. So now this time it's showing the actual measurements. So before you saw it showing the other numbers with the band mode on. Now it's showing your actual pressures, nominal pressures. And so we can see that our new sensor down here, he's got a different number. It registered right there. And so it should be set up now. And we see all of our bars are in line. So our sensor is set up. And if we go back over to F5 and look at the second sheet, we can see that our new sensor registered in at 79. So it picked it all up. Everything looks really good. And our dash light is off. So now all we got to do is take it down the road and make sure that it doesn't reactivate that sensor. If it does, then we'll have to go check something else. But I can go over here right now and just check my antennas. So let me go back get back here I'm gonna go to activate F6 and then I'm gonna turn my band mode on that's gonna put it back in check mode and now I want to go to activate the static test because I'm not driving and then with the band mode on I want to hit F4 which is the antenna diagnostics and so we can go over here and hit F4 and we'll let it run that test. So it's running the test and we'll see if it checks the antenna to make sure the antenna is good. So all it gave was check for FS entry. So I think that's okay because I'm picking up measurements on all of my, my symbols and the test says it's finished. So I think everything's good. So what we'll do is take it for a test drive and just make sure that everything is set up. So now all we got to do is just make sure you turn your band mode back off because right now it's blinking because it's in training. And so we got to make sure we turn that back off before we exit out of the system. So let's get our band mode back off and we can see that we're reading pressures now. So you can see my 
actual pressure that it's going to trigger the alarm is three bar. These are my pressures in my wheels right here. So everything set back up. Looks like we picked up our new sensor, so we should be in pretty good shape. And we'll take it for a drive and then come back and show that everything is good. All right, so after a little drive to uh, do the dynamic calibration, and the car does that on its own. Once you do the static where it uh, picks up the sensors and checks and makes sure it can communicate, it'll do the dynamic stuff on its own. So just go for a little drive, and now as you can see, I don't have any dash lights on. And what it did is as I took off driving, it told me to check all my air pressure in my tires and then perform a reset. And so then I just had to drive around for about four or five minutes, maybe a couple of miles, and then up came all the little green tires again on the screen. So there we go, got it fixed, and it was just the sensor, so it was throwing the codes for the sensor as well as a malfunction for the system. So once we got that switched out and recalibrated, we're good to go. Well, alrighty, well, thanks for watching.